OK folks, so today we're going to be uh, taking apart and overhauling a hydraulic braking system on a motorbike. And there it is. Part of a, a twin caliper system, but today we're only going to be taking one off. We're going to take it apart right down to its components, clean it up, overhaul it and rebuild it, put some new seals in there. Uh, we're going to change the brake shoes on both sides. OK, as you can see, I've picked the, uh, the front end of the bike up. It's been supported on the frame by a couple of axle stands, just to give me uh, sort of maximum flexibility so I can turn the wheel and everything as we're doing that. OK, this particular bike is a Kawasaki ZR750. It's mine, and I love it very dearly. The principles for the brakes are going to be the same on any other bike. This is my able assistant, Jake, who's uh, going to be doing most of the work. And as you can see, we've picked a right day to do it, haven't we? snowy anyway first part of any garage procedure or the pot of coffee right so first things first we're going to remove the brake caliper make it a little bit easier for us but it's just held on with two bolts as you can see that's it that's it now get the other one loose Yep, jobs are good. Okay, so we'll take those two bolts out. Yep. Not very good when your hands are cold. No, it isn't. <laughs> this is England. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that that caliper should just it's not going to do so what we're going to do just to assist it a little bit and it's the same 12 mil socket there is on the, the no you're alright on the banjo bolt here yeah which is the one that holds the uh, brings all the, the fluid down all right if we just slacken that off a little bit all right no we're not taking it off we're just slackening it all right all right folks so you can see we've got the the caliper off here I'm not undoing the banjo bolt too much just yet because I don't want to take that off yet I just want to show you these here things, but if I don't want that screwdriver, I better have left it up there, haven't I? Basically, you need to get these are the brake shoes. I'm going to take them out in a minute, but before we take them out, I'm going to use the fact that they're old to push these pistons back into their holes and their shafts. Right, that, and that'll give us a chance. Can you see them going back in? That'll give us a chance. There, like that, look. And then that one. Like that. Lovely. And that gives us the maximum chance of getting clearance in. When we put the new pads in, they're going to be substantially thicker than these. These are down to uh, just over a millimetre, which is uh, it's about time to change them. Okay, this particular model uses a small, tiny little cotter pin just here. Okay, so we need to take that out. There's a bit of clearance and grab it with the pliers, pull it out. Okay, it then goes in the parts tub. Everything we take off goes in the tub, and then we know <coughs> where it is. Okay, pin comes out in the parts tub, and that leaves us free to take out the pads. Uh, you can see those are pretty knackered pads. And that needs to come back to that. It's a bit of a, bit of a carry on, but there you go. And that's the other pad. So there we have the inside of a brake caliper. We've got these, this is a, what we call a twin pot or a two cylinder system. <coughs> brake fluid comes down here. Once you squeeze the handle, the, the brake handle, it forces brake fluid down here into this chamber here which is actually behind these two pots okay these are called the the cylinders all right so once you've got liquid in behind there being pushed through by the brake action it pushes these out okay and I'll show you that because we're going to take the whole thing apart anyway so I want these pistons out so I'm going to use brake action have you got, have you got it in there Jack? just by squeezing that it won't affect the other side and it's going to push these pistons out if you want to close up into here so when I'm squeezing you can see those pistons coming out I'm going to run out of fluid 
Not too worried, that's one of them. And he might come out. Yeah, we're going to take, we're going to have to take him out. With a pair of pliers, we're going to have to gently help him out. Alright, so we've taken the, uh, taken the brake pads out, we've left with this rather ungainly looking system here. I think what we're going to do now is just free the the, cape, the brake tube from its uh, this little stay there, and we'll uh, we'll get rid of this banjo bolt here. You will find that lots and lots of brake fluid comes out, and this is why it's a good idea once you've got it loosened off just to do it upside down like that. It's gonna it's gonna come down. And it's important to note that you do not want this brake fluid going on any painted surfaces, because it will strip paint within minutes. If you do, it's uh, it's quite easily neutralised by water. Okay, if you get it on any painted surfaces, get water on it straight away. Okay, guys. So that is the banjo bolt. I'll come back to that in a second. Well, I've got this. This tube's full of brake fluid at the moment. If I put it down, what's going to happen? Brake fluid's going to come out all over the floor, and I don't really want that to happen. So I'm going to tape it up. I need to have a bit of gaffer tape. It really is the best stuff. Right, so I'm just going to tape it on that fork leg like that. Okay, I'm going to get a bit of rag around it. I don't want any brake fluid dropping down onto my lovely paintwork. Okay, so that leaves us with the caliper. That is just a, a washer that goes on there, so the washer goes in the parts tub. Okay, we've got the banjo bolt here. That's got another washer on it. All right, which I'm just going to pop in the parts tub. Okay, so banjo bolt. What happens with this? Well, you can see on on here on this part, there's, there's a small hole in there where the hydraulic fluid go, comes out of when you squeeze the brake fluid. Uh, sorry, you squeeze the brake lever. It pops up there. And as this bolt is in here, like that, it goes through the hole in the bolt. Can you see that? It's only on one side, so it doesn't go through both sides. What it does do is it travels down through the bolt and out of that hole. It's just a way of converting the force when it comes down the tube to going across, so it gives it, effectively, it gives it a right angle. Okay. And that then goes into the, the caliper here, like that, when it's fully screwed down that hole there takes the oil from the brake reservoir up on the handlebars shoves it down through there and into the, into the chamber ok and the, that's all behind these these two cylinders here and as you can see it's full of brake fluid it's going out, it's not good stuff to get on your hands by the way folks so if you can leak it out into a receptacle of sorts to work with, because you don't want it all over the floor, I don't want it anywhere it doesn't, you don't need it to be and I'm just going to let it all flow out like that, okay? Yeah. All right, we're away again. Okay, so we're going to disassemble the whole thing. So we're letting all that brake fluid come out, but nothing that will help it to come out. We get a 10 mil spanner on that. That's the uh, air bleeding nipple, and that'll come into play a bit later once we've got the whole thing back together, and we're going for. Uh, to bleed air out of the system. If we just take that out and we'll put that in there, we'll give that a clean up, and I'll just let all the liquid come out of that caliper there. So we're going to take it more or less completely to bits. I'm going to leave this spring structure intact. That's basically what pulls the, uh, or what, what holds the brake pads off the discs. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit of brake fluid on that. These, are, these don't come out very easily, to be honest with you, and they do need a little bit of help. So rather than grip it up with a, a big pair of pliers and what have you, I use a little uh, little bit of rag, whatever that is, and I will use this, just to protect the cylinders and some thin nosed pliers there. The reason for that is you can get bigger ones on, they just tend to, if you put too much force on them, or mould grips or whatever, they'll flatten out those cylinders. And